All week long, we are celebrating Deschutes' 25th anniversary, and today we are lucky because Gary Fish, founder, owner of everything, is here with us. You're a hard man to get a hold of. Well, sometimes I'm, I'm a little tough to track down, but, but uh, I can usually be found in this space <laughs> oftentimes when I'm in town, so uh, it's a great place to be. Does it feel like uh, your home is spreading in terms of your influence in well, terms it, of your products? The, the, the product is, is certainly spreading. I mean, we continue to grow our territory and uh, I just got back from a trip actually to Thailand where we're beginning to look at some export opportunities there. Wow. And uh, so, some really wonderful uh, receptions that we, that we had there. And, uh, you know, it just might be that they're ready for uh, something like, uh, like us. Now, 25 years ago, did you think? Oh, heavens no. No, no sane person would predict what, what happened. You know, my background was the restaurant business. All we did was start this little pub. And uh, in a cool little town, Bend was about 15,000 people, I think, when we opened. Hmm. And, uh, you know, we thought it had potential, but that's what we thought. Uh -huh. uh, hmm. And if we could get this uh, little business up and running, we thought we could have a nice life, raise a family, live in a great town like Bend. And, and that was about as far as our business plan took that concept. Did, did, was beer in the business plan? Oh yeah, no, we've always, okay. the, the plan was always to make beer, but just to sell it here on the premises. Okay. Uh, but then the industry took off, hmm. the, you know, the Central Oregon area took off, and we kind of took off with it. And I said for about the first five years after we started selling outside the pub, and you know, we never really had to sell any beer. People just came and bought it, and we were just scrambling to try and figure out how make to continue enough. to make it and maintain the quality that made people want to come and buy it from us in the first place. So, hmm. uh, you know, our focus has always been there. We had to learn uh, the rest of the business. I've, I've often said, you know, I'm, I'm a really good restaurant manager. I'm pretty unqualified for everything else that I do. So we've all had to learn together. What were you doing before? I know you said the restaurant industry, but were you managing in the restaurant industry? Were you just, what were you doing? I mean, I've worked in the restaurant business since I was 16 as a dishwasher we were talking about uh, earlier in California. And uh, grew up through the restaurant business, worked my way through college uh, in the restaurant business. Didn't have anything to do when I got out of college, so my boss asked me if I wanted to become a manager. I said, sure, I'll do that for a little while. <laughs> Eventually, through several restaurants and, and several iterations, I worked myself into a basically a sweat equity position, ownership mm -hmm. position, uh, in a restaurant in, in Salt Lake City. And uh, this opportunity came up. I sold my equity back to them, mm -hmm. left Salt Lake City for what I thought was going to be Northern California to start a brewery, uh, or a brew pub, rather, uh, but had no luck there. That's where I had grown up. Both my parents were born and raised in Oregon and had come through Bend after a college reunion in Corvallis and you know couldn't stop talking about what a wonderful place it was. So we came up and looked and uh, things happened very, very rapidly from there. Hmm. How do you think the story would be different if you did end up in California? Because I don't think a lot of people know that Deschutes could have not been an Oregon thing. It could have been I, somewhere else. I think uh, as with anything else, you know, serendipity plays, plays a big role and I think uh, Jason and I, in fact, we're talking on the way down here today that it is, you know, being in the right place at the right time counts for a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are thrilled that we found Ben, that we ended up here in Ben. Uh, my parents moved here from California shortly after, so they completed their cycle to end up nice. back in Oregon. Uh, my sister now lives in Ben with her son, <laughs> and uh, we're, we, we couldn't be happier. Bend has adopted us and we have adopted Bend. Hmm. What has been the biggest surprise, and maybe from a failure standpoint, has it been a, a brand, has it been a type of beer, has it been a business decision? You know, our greatest failure, we, you know, we continue to, you know, I, I guess I don't really look at failures as failures. Failures are, uh, you know, we look at failures as having pushed the envelope beyond where we should. It's 
one of those kinds of things. How do you know where your boundaries are if you never exceed them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we continue to push our boundaries in terms of the beers we make, the way that we make them, the way that we kind of build our teams, the way that we execute our, our day-to-day work plans, and, uh, and continue to learn and grow as a group, as an organization. And so, you know, not every beer has been a complete success. Uh, not everything we've done in business has been a complete success. But on balance, the, the, the company and the business model as a whole and the group of people as a whole have been very successful. And so, hmm. uh, you know, we look at it uh, from that prism and continue to try to push those boundaries and kind of figure out where our failures are. Hmm so that we can continue to grow and improve as a group. Why beer? Did you get involved in making it a long time ago? Well, yeah, it was my high school yearbook. I was, you know, most likely to own a brewery. <laughs> really? No, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing about that. But, you know, I grew up, my father was involved in the California wine business when oh. I was growing up. He was, uh, you know, he was the son of a farmer, uh, got his degree in agriculture at uh, Oregon State. And, uh, uh, but, found his business model in uh, mostly vineyard hmm. uh, properties in California during its modern renaissance. The difference was we looked at the beer business in the mid 80s and saw kind of the wine business in the late 60s and early 70s when he was involved hmm. and drew a correlation only between the two, only uh, a couple of differences. One, the beer market was significantly larger than the wine market, even as large as it had grown at that time. And he really liked the idea that we could be, we could put in our, lay in our raw materials and pretty much get paid in cash for mm. the finished product about 30 days later with the brew pub where you're the manufacturer and the retailer on the Good same business site. business model. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was used to something <laughs> considerably different where it took you know, five to 10 years to grow a, a grapevine and then a couple of years to produce the wine. And so it, it, was, a, it was a very different model. So it, it fit. The business uh, qualification, it fit kind of the ethic. It was craft. It, it, it was able to dovetail with my experience and expertise in the restaurant business. And uh, there were some things that we needed to, to learn before we started. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I offered myself mm -hmm. up to a, a friend in Sacramento to help him open his brew pub uh, to learn more about how this specific concept worked. Well, we are. Um Extraordinarily happy to toast you Thank and you. your yeah. success. I'm very happy to be here. 25 more great. years. Here's to 25 more. Thank you. Thank you.